الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونستنصره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا وقائدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه المعين وبعد It's always a difficult subject, an issue to talk about. What should a khatib talk about when he's giving his khutbah? This has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. What are the issues that he needs to choose? What topics should he bring up? What should, what, what should he be talking to people about? Now, if we're looking at the Prophet Wasallam's life, you see that he observed Muslims. He watched closely. And then he would bring up issues that were relative to their time. Current issues that were important, that they need to learn about. And looking at the Islamic world today, looking at the Masjid of Al-Qasad being violated, they're trying to destroy it. Looking at the aggression that is happening in Syria and the civil blood that is being spilled every day. Looking at Iraq, for the last 10 years now we've lost a million Iraqi. Looking at Somalia, looking at Afghanistan, looking at Pakistan, going through them one by one. It's very difficult to choose subjects that are relevant. It's very difficult. And I do believe that whatever it is you talk about, Islam is important. Every part of Islam is important. There is nothing that we can talk about within the Islamic faith that is not relevant if you, if you have the right perspective. Today, I have chosen one of the thickest issues, one of the thickest issues within the Islamic faith. So I hope I don't take too much time, and I hope that you, you stay engaged with this. Unfortunately, we have extremism within our faith. But every theology and philosophy in the world, throughout history, does too. Every theology has had extremism within it. It's fine. Why? Because it, all you have to do is take the text and then take it out of context. Or copy and paste certain words. It's very easy. It's very easy to manipulate any text in the world by just taking a piece out, singling it out of everything around it, to try to show the person who's listening as if this is the only thing the Quran is talking about or this text is talking about. And we have two different types of extremism. We have extremism in the form of people talking about Islam as if it is the religion of war. And we have extremism in the form of people talking about Islam as if it's the religion of peace. Yes, I said it. As if it's the, it's the religion of peace. Because it isn't. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسِلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ السَّلَامِ لا وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ the religion of righteousness. That doesn't mean we don't believe in peace, in peaceful coexistence, no. But for you to feel that your back is up against the wall to the point where you have to show your religion as if it's a religion of peace, as if we have nothing to stand for, nothing to, to be, as if we have something to be ashamed of. I think that is just, that is just wrong. Basically, that is just wrong. It is neither that nor this. The extremists that slaughter and the extremists that bend over both are extremely wrong. <coughs> extremely wrong. Today I'm going to attempt to explain to you a huge problem that was brought up in the last few hundred years within the Islamic faith. If you have heard of it, then inshallah you will benefit from this. And if you haven't, then you should hear about it. You should know about this. This is important. They will use this against you, whether extremist Muslims or Western non-Muslims who want to also copy and paste 
verses of the Quran. There's a saying, a very wrong saying, that goes like this. Ayatu Sayyidi wal Qitad, the verses of the story and the verses of fighting, abrogated 140 different passages of the Quran talking about peaceful coexistence. Now that phrase itself should have been enough to end the discussion. For six or seven verses to abrogate meaning, to overrule, to annul the authority of 140 different passages of the Quran, that should have been enough. But it wasn't, unfortunately. And the truth is, Ayat to Saif, the verse of the sword, is not even known which one it is. Scholars don't know which one it is. They have different theories, but they're not sure which one Ayat to Saif is. I'm going to run through all the verses that talk about the Tal al Quran. I'm going to go through all of them, inshallah, without taking too much time. And we're going to look at their context, each and every one of them. And then it will be obvious, inshallah, to you. The prominent opinion is that Ayat al Saif is the number five of Surah Al Tawbah. فَإِذَا نَسَاقَ الْأَشْرُ الْحُرُمُ فَقُتُلُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَيْثُ وَجَدْتُوهُمْ وَخُذُوهُمْ وَاحْصُرُوهُمْ وَاقْعُدُوا لَهُمْ كُلَّ مَوْصَدٍ And when the sacred months are over, then you must fight the pagans or the mushrikeen, the ones who do not believe, and kill them, and capture them, and ambush them, and have no mercy on them. Taking that phrase out of the Qur'an is horrific. To take that phrase out and stick it anywhere and say, look what the Qur'an says, that is horrific, true. But that is taking words out of context. Now, verse number four, the one before it. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ عَاهَدْتُمْ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَنْقُصُوكُمْ شَيْئًا وَلَمْ يُظَاهِرُوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَحَدًا فَأَتِمُّوا إِلَيْهِمْ عَهْدَهُمْ إِلَى مُدَّتِهِمْ But this is the verse before it. The mushrikeen who have never violated the treaties with you, have never supported anyone against you, then fulfill your treaties and covenants with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are pious. إِنَّ اللَّهِ الْحِبْنُ الْمُتَّقِينَ The verse that is after it, number six. وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ And if any of the mushrikeen ask you for protection, if it was an open war, as, it, as, they, as they want us to believe, an open war, then what do you do? Do you offer him your protection? That's what the Quran says. فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ and, to, and tell him about the word of Allah. And then what? If he doesn't believe either Islam or Saif, and then take him, protect him, and make sure he gets where he wants to go. He used your protection. Are these verses, is the verse of Sayyid or Qitar, talking about all non-believers? Is this the, a verse talking about an open war with all those who do not believe, or about specific people who had a specific action against Muslims? Let's go through, through the verses. Verse number seven, كَيْفَ يَكُونُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ is all beside the, the verses before and after it. كَيْفَ يَكُونُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ عَهْدٌ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَعِنْدَ رَسُولِهِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ عَاهَدْتُمْ عِنْدَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ فَمَا اسْتَقَامُوا لَكُمْ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا لَهُمْ Those who fulfill their treaties with you and covenants, then you fulfill your treaties and covenants with them. Verse number ten, that summarizes the whole issue. لا يرقبون في مؤمن إلا ولا ذمة وأولئك هم المعتدون. They do not respect their treaties and covenants with Muslims, and those are the transgressors. The issue is transgression. The Muslims, in the last couple of years of his life, صلى الله عليه وسلم. When they had certain power, started making covenants and treaties with all non-Muslims around them. The treaties are talking about what? That you do not kill us. You let us exist as Muslims. And the mushrikeen broke those treaties and violated those treaties time and time again. And they kept on doing it and backstabbing the Muslims to the point these verses came down saying that's it. No more. Those who have broken the treaties three, four times in a row, that's it. No more treaties with them. No more. Verse number 12. وَإِن فِي دِينِكُمْ 
And if they break their treaties with you, and they try to destroy Islam, and they try to destroy your existence, then fight them. Verse number 13. Will you not fight those people who have broken and violated the treaties with you? And they have tried to expel the Prophet from his land that he lived in. And they started transgressing against you. They started this. Are you afraid of them? Allah is more worthy for him to revere than them. It is obvious from the context what the idea is. It's obvious. Just read the surah. But to take out verses, put them on the wall and say, that is it. That's what they say. That's what Quran says. It's horrific. It's just horrific. Yes, fight them when they break their treaties with you time and time again. Yes, fight them when they do not respect your existence or do not respect the covenants with you and they do not respect your blood. Yes, of course. <clears throat> Defend, stand up for yourselves. In the middle of all of these verses, three times in verse number three, talking to the mushrikeen, in general, if you repent from doing this, don't do this again, then that's good for you. In verse number five, in the same verse of Qita, the same verse, at the end of it, and if they repent and they and they clean salah and they give zakah, then leave them alone. In verse number 11, that they are brothers in faith. In the midst of these verses, three times, if they repent, then what give them alone? Rahma ajiba. Rahma ajiba. Verse number 29 is of the Tawbah. Also called Ayat al Qitab. <laughs> ولا يحرمون ما حرم الله ورسوله ولا يدينون دين الحق من الذين أوتوا الكتاب حتى يعطوا الجزية عن يدهم ومصابهون This one is talking about fighting the people of the book. But when you look at the verse, there is no option offered to the people of the book. The same options that were offered to those who didn't believe. فَإِنْ تَلْهُ وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ It's not there. You don't find it. Just that verse. That's it. Even though we know that no matter who it is you're in trouble or fighting with, the moment they say, La ilaha illallah, it's over. It's done. He is now your brother and it's over. So why isn't the option there in the, in the verse? Because that verse is not talking about religious fighting. It's merely political. It's a political verse talking about a political problem. Problem, sorry. Eight times during his life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there were there were wars against the Romans, the Christian Romans in the north. Eight times during his life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Eight times he fought with them. There was a man called Farwat ibn Umar, and he was the governor of Maal al Urdun for al Ghassaniyin, and they were a, a, a group of Arabs who were allies with the Roman Empire. And he became a Muslim. Alayhi. And when they found out that he was a Muslim, they crucified him and they murdered him. And they murdered every other person who became a Muslim in Urdun. Persecution against belief. The Prophet وسلم, sent to Jordan 15 Sahaba to teach Islam. All 15 were brutally murdered by the Roman Empire. He sent al Harith ibn Umayr al Azdi. It is a very known story. There's the reason of Ghazwat Mu'ta. He sent him to talk to one of the kings just as a messenger with a note. Just like that. And, and you never kill the messenger. That is code. Correct? That is a code. You never kill the messenger. He was sent there. And the moment he got there, they killed him. And because they killed him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam moved an army. And thus with Mukta happened. And yes, the Muslims were beaten that that's why they did not win, they weren't prevalent. Because it was unbelievably unequal. Three thousand Muslims against at least a hundred thousand of the Romans. 
But to understand this verse, you need to know the, hist the history behind it. The number of times that the Roman Empire tried to wipe out the Muslims, the number of times they stabbed them in the back, how many treaties they broke and violated. And that's why that verse is there. The only, the sole purpose of the verse, the sole purpose of it, is to establish political existence. That's why at the end of the verse it does not say, and if they become Muslim, they'll leave them alone. No. Hatta yu'kul jizya. Evidence of them accepting your political authority is for them to give jizya. That's evidence. An yad. You know what an yad means? An yad means, hatta yu'kul jizya ta an yadin. An yad means for those who are capable of doing it. Meaning those who are too poor, they don't have to pay jizya. Al Rahman, even in the midst of this verse, verse that seems very intense and very difficult. Those who can afford it is merely understanding the context of the Quran. For you to deal with the Quran as if it was set down in one block with no with nothing happening around it, no circumstances. No life story. You, you, you can't understand. It's impossible. You can't do it. You have to know what was happening to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and to the Muslims. That's the first number twenty-nine. So, so, first number thirty-six. Very obvious at the end of it. kafa <laughs> And as they fight you all together, supporting each other, coming together to wipe you out, then you do the same thing. Gather, your, gather each other as Muslims and fight them back. You see, the fighting in the Quran is talking about Sattul Idwan, pushing back transgression. Fighting those who are transgressing against you, those who are persecuting you and oppressing you, fighting them back, establishing the right for your own existence. The verses of Surah Tawbah could not be could not be more obvious. He also says, Ayat of Qital is 193 in Surah Al-Baqarah. <coughs> Let's go through, through those verses from, one, from 190 to 194. We go through the whole passage. It goes like this. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And fight in the name of Allah. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَلَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا It is the most obvious verse in the Quran. And fight in the name of Allah those who fight you and do not transgress. And do not transgress. Do not la ta'tadu. Do not oppress anyone. Wa la ta'tadu. Inna Allah la yuhibbu al-mu'tadeen. Allah does not like those who transgress. Wa qutuluhum haythu daqiftum. And fight them where you find them. Wa akhrijuhum min haythu akhrajukum. And make them leave the same land that they made you leave in the first place. It is their action in the first place that brought this upon them, upon you and them. And do not fight them in the Masjid al Haram until they fight you first. But if they do, then fight them back. Then right after that, and if they stop, SubhanAllah, complete change of, of shifting of gears in the verse. And if they stop, then Allah is the full Rahim. This is the verse that they use. And fight them so there will be no fitna. So the religion will be for Allah. What is fitna? Fitna is a very known word that is used for someone who is being forced out of his faith. Someone who is put in a test or a difficult situation that is making him lose his own faith. Fight them so Muslims don't lose their own faith. So Muslims aren't forced out of believing in Allah. <laughs> when it takes talk, فَلَا عُدْوَانَ إِلَّا عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ Then you will not fight except those who oppress you. Going to verse number 38 in Surah Al-Anfal. These are all the verses that talk about the Quran, all of them put together. قُلْ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنْ يَلْتَهُوا يُغْفَرْ لَهُمْ مَا قَدْ السَّلَفْ Tell those who do not believe. If they stop fighting you, and they stop transgressing against you, 
يُغْفَرْ لَهُمْ مَا قَدْ سَلَفْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forget everything that they did before. وَإِنْ يَعُودُوا And if they insist on fighting you, فَقَدْ مَضَتْ سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ Then what happened to those who did that before them will happen to them. What happened? What is it? وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ That you're going to fight them. That you are going to fight them off. وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةً وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ The same verse, in the same meaning, the same context. فَإِنْ انْتَهَوْا And if they stop, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has seen that they stopped, and He will be forgiven. The same thing goes for verses 88 to 91 in Surah Al-Nisa, talking about Munafiq, in the same thing. Munafiqin who showed Nifaq in their action, but still claim to be Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not fight them. If they don't fight, you don't fight them. If they do not actual, actually fight you, then do not fight them. Even if they show the fuck, yes, it doesn't matter. Leave them alone. 88, 91, we read it in Surah Nisa. Very obvious. It's horrific to take verses out of the Quran and try to show as if they came like this with no context around them. As if they're just like that. That's all they are. Just the wording. Just the wording. Not even reading the verses before it or after it. Not even looking at the whole passage together. I would accept at least reading the whole passage. At least reading four or five verses around it just to get a, you know, an understanding of what the verse is talking about. At least you owe the Quran that much. But let me say this. You will have a different type of extremism. People who do the same thing to the verses of Salah. They take them out of their context. They slap them on a wall and this is it. See, it's all wrong. All of this is not fair. This is not righteousness. When you look at the Quran, you're looking at the whole Quran. Every word in it, all together. All of the circumstances surrounding it, all the trend. Gresh, all the, all the transitions in the Prophet's life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what, what he was in Mecca, what, what he was in Medina, and how things changed, studying the whole thing together. And then you understand it. To take out verses and treat them as if this is the only part of Islam. This is oppression, this is wrong. الحمد لله كما أمر وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيد البشر وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بعدل قطر المطر Verses 7, 8, and 9 of Surah Al-Intahi Laid Allah The unequivocal law of how we are supposed to see people who are not Muslim They couldn't be more obvious I will read them for you. عَسَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ عَادَيْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ مَوَدَّةٌ وَاللَّهُ قَدِيرٌ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ May Allah one day put between you and those who are your enemies love. I repeat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day put in your hearts and the hearts of your enemies when they love Wadda. And Allah is Qadir, capable of everything. Allah Wafur al Rahim, and He is most forgiving and most merciful. La yanhaku Allahu an il ladina lam yukatilukum fiddin, wa lam yukhrijukum min diyarikum, and tabaruhum wa tukusiku ilayhim. In Allah yukhibu al mukusiqeen. Those who have never fight you, fight. Those who have never transgressed against you, as far as your religion, your belief, your right to believe, your right to have your own faith, and they never expelled you from your countries, they never threw you out of your land and taken your property. Those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not tell you not to act, not to treat them bilbir. He uses the word bir. The word bir is used with what he when we use bir and walidain, the way you should treat your parents, in that verse, and tabarruhum, to treat them with bir, for tuqsiqu ilayhim, and be fair and just with them. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are just, 
إنما ينهاكم الله عن الذين قاتلوكم في الدين وأخرجوكم من دياركم وظاهروا على إخراجكم أن تولوا. But he, he does deny you from being allies with those who oppressed you in your faith and expelled you from your land and supported those who tried to expel you from your land. Do not be their allies. And though وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ ظَالِمُونَ And those of you who takes them as allies or oppressors. Do those verses make it obvious? Puts it out for us. This is how you see those who do not share your faith. As obviously as possible. Couldn't be more clear. If they do not oppress you within your faith, and they do not take away your property, and they do not support those who, who do so, then there is no problem. Treat, treat them with bir, the best of conduct. The best of conduct, what bir means, and fairness and justice. And those who don't, and those who don't, those who, who oppress you those who persecute you and transgress against you, then that's when we have Ayat al -Qitab. There is nothing for you to be ashamed of when you read these parts of the Qur'an. Do not hold them back in a discussion. They cannot be used against you. I have to be very clear about this. These verses are not to be used against you as a Muslim. Something for you to shy away from when talking about Islam, or not to bring up, or sugarcoat. No. These verses are obvious and clear. And if they're not clear to you, then go read them. And look within them, they will become clear. And you will understand that Islam, Deen al haqq is a religion of righteousness that believes in standing up for what is right. We do not, we do not accept oppression against ourselves and, and just watch it happen. We don't do that. As Muslims, we don't accept it. There are religions that are like that. Buddhism, they take us, laugh, they don't care, fine, whatever. We just sit down and take it. Muslims don't. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This is what we believe in. It's, very, it's actually very beautiful and it's very righteous and it makes you feel very, very safe. You do not transgress against anyone as a Muslim, as an article of your own faith, but at the same time, you do not accept transgression against you as an article of your own faith. And if there's anything wrong with that, if you feel there's anything wrong with that, then you need to go and revise your understandings. The verses of the Quran, if anything, if anything at all, show the level of mercy in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word. Because even when he's talking about fighting, if they repent, if they stop, if they leave you alone, if they don't fight you anymore, then let them go. Let them go. Treat them nicely. Fulfill your treaties with them time and time again. Why? Because this is not a religion that looks for blood, but it looks for righteousness. That's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first talked about Qita, for the first time, I ended this. The first word. Now, after they left Mecca went to Medina, it is permissible for Muslims to fight. Why, Ya Allah? Be anhum bullying. Because they have been oppressed. Because they have been oppressed. I hope my message has been conveyed properly. I say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wafiqni wa ta'ala wa muhammad wa iyaqun. Wa alamu anna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amma rana bi amrin azim. Intada'ahu bi nafsihi faqala inna Allah wa malalikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu tasbima. Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala alayhi. كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن الأربعة الخلفاء السادة الحنفاء أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وارض اللهم عن أزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وعن آل بيته والصحابة والتابعين وعنا معهم يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمين
والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم ارحمنا إذا علق منا الجبين وكثر منا الأنين وبكانا الحبيب ويبس منا الطبيب اللهم ارحمنا إذا أدرجنا في أكفادنا وارحمنا إذا نزلنا قبورنا وارحمنا إذا نفخ في الصور وارحمنا إذا قمنا للعرض والنشور اللهم فرج عن إخواننا مستضعفين في مشارق الأرض وفي مغاربها اللهم غوثك للمسجد الأقصى يا الله اللهم غوثك للمسجد الأقصى يا رب العالمين اللهم غوثك للمسجد الأقصى يا حي يا قيوم اللهم أخرج منه الصهاينة المارقين اللهم أخرجهم منه أدلة الصابرين اللهم لا تمكن لهم فيه يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم وانظر إلينا نظر رحمة يا أكرم الأكرمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي أيضاً لعلكم تذكرون أقل الصلاة اللهم 